Good afternoon, boys and girls, and welcome back to another exciting episode of the Pioneer Bible Club. Now, we are coming to the close of another week, and we've been learning much this week about the life of David, and I'm excited to pick up where we left off on Wednesday, and I trust that today will be a blessed day in all that we say and do. So, oh, you know what? I'm missing something. What? I've forgotten something. Anybody recognize? Can you tell what I've forgotten? You've got it, my Bible. I need my Bible. Can someone please bring me, bring me my Bible? Oh, come along. Oh, hey, how you doing, Micah? And uh, come on over here, if you would, please. This is many of you know my good son, Micah. So uh, we're go- while you, while, since you're here, why don't you uh, you want to open us in a word of prayer today? That sounds good. Okay, children, let's bow our heads together. And I'll, since old Micah is here with me, we might as well ask him to lead us in a word of prayer this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you today and we thank you for the standing you've given us and for the lovely weather outside and pray that you bless this club today and that many, that many children would listen and that they would think about the words of this Bible club and that they would that they would believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Pray that you would keep all the people safe. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Micah. And now that I've got my Bible, I hope you do as well. I want you to go ahead and take it and have it ready so we can learn more about the life of David. And may God give us a great club today. Welcome back to Songs of Joy. The Bible says, I will sing of mercy and judgment unto thee, O Lord, will I sing. We're going to start today by singing, praise him, praise him. Praise Him, praise Him, all ye little children. God is love, God is love. Praise Him, praise Him, all ye little children. God is love, God is love. Serve Him, serve Him, all ye little children. God is love, God is love. Welcome 
to another segment where we learn about a wonderful attribute of our God. Now, as you can see behind me, what is it that you see behind me? What kind of building is that? That's right, it's a castle! How many of you, raise your hands, if you enjoy castles and you think they're really cool and really neat? Uh, I think they're amazing as well. Raise your other hand, that's this hand here, if you've ever been to a real castle. Raise your hand. Oh, several of you have. You've been to a castle. Now, I wonder if some of you can tell me what are some of the different parts of a castle. Shout out the answers if you know. Yes, that's right. A castle has walls and it's got gates. And some of them have a drawbridge. Some of them even have a moat that's filled up with water. But what about this big, tall, towery bit in the middle? Do any of you know what that's called? Oh, I think one of you got it. It's called a keep. And back in the days when they built castles, a keep was the most secure and the strongest part of all of the castle. And even if an enemy army could manage to get across the drawbridge and get across the moat. And they could manage to break down the doors or break down the gates or maybe find some way to get through the walls or over the walls. They couldn't get into the keep. It was the strongest and most secure place you could be. And the Bible has a different word for that. It's called a high tower. And the Bible says that our God is a high tower. I'd like to read from you to you a verse from Psalm chapter 18, and David is writing, and he says, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in him I will trust, my buckler, the horn of my salvation, and notice this last bit, and my high tower. Do you know what he was saying? because David was a believer, because he had trusted by faith in God, he knew that God was his high tower, that he was secure with God, that he was safe with God. And the Bible tells us that our salvation is that way, that if you will trust in Jesus Christ and you will believe in him to save you, that he will keep you. He will keep you secure. Jesus is speaking and he says, I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. How secure is it to be held in the hand of Jesus Christ? No man can pluck you out. But then he goes even further. He says, My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. And we can picture it this way. We're held in the hand of Jesus Christ, but we're also held in the hand of the Father. How secure is the eternal life that Jesus Christ gives? I hope you know Him as your Savior. I hope you can say that He is holding you in His hands. And we're going to say this word all together again. Our God is a high tower. Boys and girls, welcome back to our memory verse, and we are looking at Psalm chapter 27 and verse 4. And who was this written by? David, that's right. And we have been learning about the life of David in our Bible lessons, haven't we? And this here is written by David. He's telling us about the one thing he desires of the Lord, and that would he seek after, that he would dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of his life to behold the beauty of the Lord, which we learned about last time, didn't we? And then at the very end, it says, and to inquire in his temple. What does that mean? What does that big word inquire mean? Do you know at home? Really, it means to ask, to go to and ask. And you know, last week I had to do a bit of inquiring myself. I had to get on this phone here and I had to inquire with the US border protection to see if they would let me stay in the USA for a little bit longer. And you know what they did? They let me stay for another 30 days. So I'm very glad that I could inquire about that and I got my answer. But 
That's not really very important in comparison to this because this is talking about inquiring in the temple of God, going to God himself and inquiring. And it was important for me to go and speak to the US government, but do you know what, who was more important for me to go to? To get on my knees and inquire with God what he would have me to do. And this is important for all of us. It wasn't just important for David, not just important for me, but it's important for you. That if you are a Christian today, that you have the privilege to go to God in prayer because of the Lord Jesus, and you can ask him, Lord, what will you have me to do? And if you are not a Christian today, it's also very important, very important for you that because through the Lord Jesus, and if you believe on the Lord Jesus, you are able to come to God and you know what you are able to inquire of him. Lord, will you forgive me of my sin and come into my heart? So it's important for all of us. It might just be tagged on the end here, but it's important for you and for me. So we are going to go through all of this. Very now, good, very good. How incredible is it to think about this, that... David is saying he wants to live in God's house to behold his beauty and to inquire in his temple. Because the reality is, is you and I have the chance to be in the presence of God today through the power of the Holy Spirit and to behold his beauty through the word of God and to inquire in his temple on our knees in prayer. And so this is something that God has, has given you and I the chance to behold and to inquire, to read God's word and to spend time in prayer. And so we hope that you guys are doing those things because they are, they are very important to the Christian life. So we are going to add this and I'd like to add a couple more uh, figure, uh, actions, not figures, actions. <laughs> and to, and for inquire, since this is prayer, I know we did a similar action to this, but I really think this is important that we do a prayer. And we'll kind of look down and to the, to the left or to the right, which other way and lock your knuckles like this, okay? That'd be very good to inquire in his, and then we're going to do this temple like this. You don't have to make the sound effect, but like two pillars. Uh, you can see the two pillars of this temple here and kind of like that, okay? So let's try to do that all together now. Psalm chapter 27, verse 4, and we're going to do the whole thing. This whole big one. Hopefully you guys have been working on it. Do you think you can do it? I think I can do it, yeah. Okay, I'm not Just sure about. if I can. Let's get us down a countdown on the count of three, two, one. Psalm, Psalm chapter, chapter 27, verse 4. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Psalm chapter 27 verse 4. Wow, that was pretty stinking good. I'm very impressed with you guys. That was very, very good. And I think we should run through it one more time. One more time at least, just to check that we remember it all. And sealing it in there, hiding God's word in your heart. Okay, on the count of three, two, one. Psalm chapter 27 verse 4. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Psalm chapter 27 verse 4. Very good. Very good and thank you so much. For learning this with us and I hope that you remember this not just now but in the weeks and the months and the years to come maybe if you think of it sometime maybe you'll say it at home and you'll repeat it at home just so that you keep on remembering these important words and next time we see you we'll be learning a new memory verse hello boys and girls and welcome to the prayer time you know the Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 1 and verse 14 when the Lord Jesus had left the earth, it says this, these all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus and with his brethren. You know, it's very, very important that we understand boys and girls, it's always been for Christians that we've always continued in prayer. It's not always easy sometimes, but you and I must learn how to pray. Now, we're gonna to pray today for the country of Brazil. How many of you know where Brazil is? Very good, well done. And to help us to pray for the country of Brazil, we've asked some of our friends who are there right now to tell us how we can pray for them. 
Opa! Oi! Tudo bem? We, We are, are from, from Brazil. Brazil! Brazil is the largest country in the South America and the fifth largest country in the world. Brazil is home to many wild animals and the birds and the snakes. We have uh, too many people, religious, in Brazil. These people don't have a relationship with God. We need your help. We have too many young guys in Brazil. And this are the site for bad ways. And we need your help to pray for these guys. Please help Brazil. Please help, help us to pray to Brazil. Ciao. Ciao. Okay, boys and girls, let's pray together. Remember, we're going to pray for the country of Brazil today. And I hope you're praying as well at home as I pray. Also, boys and girls, remember that little challenge? You meant to go and find the space maybe sometime today, and maybe your room, and pray to the Lord, spend some time with Him. Will you do that today? Very good. Now, let's pray for the country of Brazil and ask the Lord that He would help them at this time. Shall we pray together? Ready? A. Oh, very good. B. Very good. C. Heavenly Father, we come before thee and we ask thee, Lord, that you would bless this Bible club today. We ask you, Lord, that you would speak to the children, that many of them would be saved. Lord, we pray for this country, Brazil. We ask thee, Lord, that you would help them at this time, bring great peace and help to the leaders, to the people there who are standing for thee. Lord, help them to know thy help. We pray, Lord, that many boys and girls and mums and dads in Brazil will be saved. We pray that many new churches will be able to be started as a result of what thou art doing. So Lord, bless uh, this country, we pray. Pour out your spirit upon them, we ask. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm so good you're with us today. Remember, if you have a prayer request, go to our website, get your mum and dad to help you, cchtrust.org.uk, and fill in a prayer request. We'll see you again next time on the Prayer Time on the Pioneer Bible Club. Today we're going to look at a Bible truth from God's Word. Have you ever been given an invitation to go to something? Like say a birthday party? Oh, you're invited to Charles's birthday party. Wow, I'm going to that. Maybe have you been given an invitation to say a parade? Oh, better believe I'll be at the parade on High Street. That's a good invitation. Have you ever been given an invitation to go to a, a Sunday school? Hey, you're invited to Oxford Baptist Chapel Sunday School. Oh, that's a good invitation. Or maybe, just maybe, have you been given an invitation from the Queen? Hey, you're invited to go see the Queen of England. Wow. Now, I don't know if that will happen. But that would be, those would be all some very good invitations, wouldn't it? What if I were to tell you that God has given you an invitation? You see, just as we've just received some invitations to go to maybe a sleepover birthday party at a friend's house or to see the Queen of England, you know, just like that, God has given all of us an invitation. Would you like to know what that is? Good. I'm glad you would. In John chapter 3 and verse 15, it says this. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He's giving a wonderful invitation out to people and saying, Anyone who believes in me can have eternal life. Anyone who will. He's saying, Whos it says, whosoever will believe in the Lord Jesus Christ can have eternal life. That is, that means anyone. You know, this invitation from God is sent out to you and to me and to your friends and to your mom and your dad and to, to anyone. God said in John chapter 3 and verse 16 that he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And he's giving an invitation to believe on his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Saying, anyone who will. Will you? Will, will you? Have, have you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ? It says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And this is an invitation to believe. An invitation to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. That he died on a cross 
He was buried and he rose again the third day. That's the wonderful invitation that God has given. He's given it to all of us. And you know what's left to be done with an invitation? What is the only thing left to be done with, with an invitation to go to a birthday party? Well, you're going to either accept and go, or you're going to reject it. And so the only thing that's left to be done with an invitation is the decision that you'll make with it. Today, we're going to do something just a little bit different. I want to see how clever you are. And so in just a moment, I'm going to put up a screen on the back that's a bit of a jigsaw. And you're going to get 10 seconds to put it together. And I'm going to see if you can guess where we're going before the 10 seconds is up. Are you ready? Are you sitting at the edge of your seat? Okay, we're going to begin in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Done. Did you get it? Did you guess where we're going? That's right. It is China. The wall behind me is the Great Wall of China. And we're going to visit my very special friend, Emily, who is going to tell us about someone God used in a miraculous way in China. Let's go. Gladys Elwood was born in 1902 in London into a poor Christian family. She used to work as a maid where she would borrow books from the family's library. This was where she first read about China. She'd heard of missionaries going to help these people and wanted to join them. At 28, Gladys applied to go to China with the China Inland Mission, but she was turned down because they thought she was too old and wouldn't be able to learn the difficult Chinese language. Gladys decided that if they wouldn't take her, she would go herself. Gladys saved all the money she could and went to help an elderly missionary, Jeannie Lawson, already in China. The two women ran an inn from mule caravans where they provided rest and food. Gladys soon learnt to speak Chinese and they took this opportunity to share the Bible with many of these travellers. While Gladys Aylward was in China, she rescued a hundred children, many of them orphans. She was known to them as a Weida, which means virtuous one. During this time, China was at war with Japan, and Japan began dropping bombs on Gladys' city of Shikau. Gladys herself had been wounded by a bullet in her back and was weak and tired, but on the other side of the Yellow River would be a train that could carry the, all the children to a safer place called Shi'ar. And so she set off with the hundred children she cared for through the mountains and to the Yellow River. They had little food and water and would even have to make human chain down the mountainside and pass the younger children down from hand to hand. To keep their spirits up, they would sing, I am Jesus, little lamb, happy all the day long I am, as they marched. They passed through the town, Yuan Shu, which had been badly bombed. They spent a few days on the bank of the Yellow River, waiting to hear the plains of the enemy. The children began to complain of hunger, and when would the boats come? Gladys prayed and comforted the children. She told them stories and they sang together as they watched the water from any boats. But they reached safety at last. God protected them and not one was lost or killed. At the end of the journey, Gladys fell sick and almost died. But the Lord had many more plans for Gladys' life. And she lived to serve her saviour by serving many people in China for many more years. This included government officials, lepers, children, Buddhist monks and many others. Gladys died in 1970 after serving and loving the people of China for many, many years. Gladys' story is really amazing and makes us think, what could we do for the Lord if only we would be willing? All right, children, welcome to the Pioneer Review today, and boy, have we got a game for you. The game today is called Seek and Find, so I hope you'll do your very best to get your spy glasses out, 
get ready and look at that screen, you're going to seek and find the right answer in these series of photographs. So look very carefully, listen very carefully, and seek and find. All right, children, this is our first seek and find for today. Now we are seeking and trying to find a particular item in this picture. The particular item relates to the Bible verse for this week. What item reminds us from our Bible verse how often we should desire to dwell with the Lord? All right, what item reminds us of how often should we desire to dwell with the Lord? Have you got an idea? It's a tough one to start with. If you chose the calendar, well done, all the days of our life all the days and there's the calendar with all the days on it very well done next question all right children we're looking at this next photograph you might see some stacks of books here and you are looking for a particular book of the bible and i hope that you can seek and find the right one where is the main place in the bible we can learn about wisdom. This is a question from our Bible lesson just on Wednesday, our last Bible lesson. And where in the Bible is the main place we learn about wisdom? Have you pointed it out there on the screen? Have you got it? The answer is Proverbs. Well done if you got that correct answer. All right, children, this is our third and final question in the Pioneer Review today for Seek and Find. And I hope that you can look in this photograph and seek and find the object that answers this question. Psalm 119 and verse 130 reminds us of a truth of God's Word. It is a sad thing that many believers do not read the Word of God, and I hope that each of you children are reading the Word of God but we must read God's Word to receive understanding and wisdom. And this verse in Psalm 119 reminds us that God's Word gives us what? What does God's Word give us? What is the object in this photograph that reminds us of what God's Word gives us? Do you have it? Do you think you know what the object is? Well done if you said the work light down at the bottom right hand side, the yellow and black work light. God's Word gives us light. Well done today in the Pioneer Review and we look forward to the next time in Pioneer Review. Have a great day. How sweet. How sweet, how sweet are thy words unto my taste. Yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. How sweet, how sweet are thy words unto my taste, yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. I have refrained my feet from every evil way, that I might keep thy word. I have refrained my feet from every evil way, that I might keep thy word. But without faith, but without faith, it is impossible to please him without faith. It is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently. Hello, my name is David. We're going to read First Samuel chapter 17, verse 22-29. And David rose up early in the morning and left the sheep with a keeper and took and went as Jesse had commanded him as he came to the trench and the host was going forth, forth to the fire and shouted for 
the battle for Israel and the Philistines and put the battle in array army against army. And David left his carriage in the hand of the keeper of the carriage and ran into the army and came he saw salted his brethren. As he talked with them, behold, and behold, there came up champion the Philistine of Gath, Gath, Goliath, by name out of the armies of the Philistines, and spake according to the same words, and David heard them. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him, and were so afraid. And when the men of Israel said, have ye seen uh, this man that is come up surely to defy Israel? Uh, is he come up and it shall be that the man who killeth him, the king, will en enrich him with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel? And David spake to the men and men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth his, this Philistine, and taketh away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine, that he could defy the armies of the living God? And the people answered him, After this Man are saying, So shall it be done to the man that killeth him. And Elab the eldest brother heard when he spake unto the men, and Elab's anger was kindled against David. And he said, Why camest thou down hither, and whom hast thou? Thou left those few sheep in the wilderness. I know thy prayed and the naughtiness of thine heart, for thou art down there, down that thou mightest be see the battle. And David said, What have I now done? Is there not a cause? Hello boys and girls, uh, I'm very happy now that you're here with the Bible lesson and uh, we've got to the part where in David's life where it's probably the most, one of the most exciting events in the whole of the Bible. In fact many people around the world know about this event even if they'd never read the Bible and you find the event in 1 Samuel chapter 17. I'm going to read couple of verses to set the scene. 1 Samuel 17 verse 2 and 3. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and pitched by the valley of Elah and set the battle in array against the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on a mountain on the one side and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side and there was a valley between them. So just imagine we're here in the Elah Valley. Uh, on the hillside over this way, you've got the army of the Philistines, a huge army. And over here, the army of Israel, the Lord's army. And then a huge champion, uh, a giant called Goliath, came out every day to taunt uh, the armies of Israel. And I think that he wanted to go for the king because he mentioned him, where's your king? Come, I want him to fight me. But King Saul had a, for a long time rejected the Lord, so he was afraid. And it goes on. And the Philistines said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and all Israel heard those words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Now I've got someone to introduce you to. This is my Goliath. You can see, compare him to my, I'm quite a, a tall man. I think he was nine foot, about nine foot tall. 
imagine that. A huge man coming out every day to challenge the armies of Israel. Just imagine that. Well, you know, the Bible uh, isn't, isn't just a history book. It isn't just, you know, for us to think, oh, that interesting. Very nice. I'm very interested in this. No, the Bible is meant to help us. And so we have to think, okay, what does it mean for me? What challenges are there for me? And you know, when Goliath came out, everyone was afraid. So the king was afraid. The soldiers were afraid. And if you were there, you would have been afraid as well. They all ran up the hillside to watch this giant. And the giant was shouting and swearing and challenging them, come out. They were afraid. But let me ask you, are you afraid? You might say, me? I'm not afraid of anything. But I've got some suggestions. I've got three suggestions for you, just quickly. And here's number one. Are you afraid of God? You might say, me? I'm not afraid of God. I'm here. I'm in the Pioneer Bible Club. And I usually go to Sunday school. I can't at the moment, obviously, but I usually go to Sunday school. I'm not afraid of God. But it could be, and this is the same for many, many people around the world. They're interested in the Lord. They may read their Bible. They may go to church. They might know the answers to questions from the Bible. But they haven't taken that last step of giving their lives to the Lord, of being saved being born again. You know, the Bible says you must be born again. But many people have, have not gone that, that far. They say, that's enough. Could it be you? Could it be that you're afraid of God? You're afraid of taking that last step and asking him to forgive you for your sins, asking him to change your life, giving your life to him and knowing him. Maybe you're afraid of that. Here's another one. Number two. Afraid of your friends. Are you afraid of your friends? You might say, me, I'm not afraid of my friends. But let me suggest something. And this is true of me. When I was growing up and I went to Sunday school, I used to listen to the gospel and I think, oh, hold on a minute, I'd have, I'd have a flash forward. And all of a sudden, my friends are there running towards me. And you can imagine what they say. Oh, hello, I haven't seen you for ages. It's great to see you. Come with us. We're going to get into mischief. We're going to cause trouble somewhere. Come with us. And they say, well, we've got some great jokes that we're going to some dirty jokes. I want to tell you, come with us. And then you see yourself saying, I can't come with you because I've found the Lord Jesus. I trust in him. I can't do those things anymore. And, it, and the flash forward suddenly disappears and you think, oh no, I could never do that. It's so embarrassing. I could never talk to my friends like that. And it's because you're afraid of your friends. It may be that you don't come to the Lord and you're not saved because you're afraid of your friends. Could that be you? And here's the third one. Number three, afraid of giving up your sins. Now this is a big one. Many, many, many people can't turn to the Lord. They can't trust in him because they don't want to give up their sins. They're afraid of giving up their sins. Now, what do you mean sins? Well, the worst sins are sins in the heart. So you feel proud. You feel proud of yourself. You know, the Lord hates pride. But you feel proud of what you've done. And you compare yourself with your friends and you feel you're better. You're better at football. You're better looking. You're better in many different ways and you want them to know it. You're a proud person. Or it could be you're greedy and selfish. Everything you want is for yourself. You don't really care about anyone else. And, and people have their favourite sins. Now I'm not going to suggest any. But you have a favourite sin too. Everyone has at least one or two or three favourite sins. And they're like the sins, the default sins that we go to. 
the sins that we love, that we can't give up. Those sins are our favourite sins. And it could be that you're afraid of giving up your special favourite sin. Now the sin could be in your mind, your thinking. The things that you think you know are bad and wrong. And it seems you get away with it all the time because no one can see what's in your mind. But you know the Lord can see. But you say, oh no, don't worry about that. And you keep your sin, you can't turn to the Lord because you're afraid of giving up your sin. Could that be you? Well, let's go back to the story. You know, David wasn't there at the time when the Goliath, the, the champion Goliath came out from the Philistines. He wasn't there. The Bible tells us that he was back home watching over the sheep, back with his father. But his father said to him one day, I want you to go to the army because his three older brothers were there in the army. And his father said to him, take some food. So he took some, uh, some corn, some flour, uh, 10 cheeses and 10 loaves of bread. And David said, yes, I'll go. He left the sheep with the keeper and off he went to the army. And uh, it took him a while to get there. And when he arrived, he found the captain, gave the food and then found his brothers. And they're catching up and saying, hello, how are you? It's great. But then the champion came out from the host of the Philistines and everyone ran away up the hillside and David was saying, what's happening? And then he could see Goliath, this man that was taunting and swearing and shouting at the army of Israel. And David felt upset because he thought, well, this is the, uh, the Lord's army, the army of the Lord. Why isn't there someone to go and fight this Goliath? And he said, well, why can't someone go? And David was making such a commotion that the king, the king Saul heard of it and called for him. And David said, I will go. I will go and fight him. And uh, the king said, well, you've got to have some armor. So he tried some armor on, but it was no good. And then in the end, David just was just as he was. But because he was a shepherd, he had uh, a shepherd's bag. I have a bag here. So I put this bag on. In the Bible it's called a shepherd's scrip. And in the bag he had his sling. I've made this sling. It's maybe something like this that he used to use uh, to fight against wild animals. And he went down to the brook and he found some stones some smooth stones. I've got some stones here. He found five smooth stones. But he only needed one. So he chose one. And he went towards... Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait just a moment now. Now this is an amazing story. It's one of my favorite stories in the Old Testament. But... I think we're going to have to stop it there for today. I know, I know, I know. I feel the very same way. But this is such a good lesson. I don't want to rush it, and we're running out of time. So let's pick up where we leave off now. We'll pick up on Sunday. How's that sound? Coming up on Pioneer Bible Club, thank you guys so, so very much for joining us. Today, every Sunday, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we have a Pioneer Bible Club, and we want all of you to be right here watching. So if you haven't yet, like our page, subscribe, uh, make sure to comment, share it with friends, invite friends, have a watch party, do whatever you need to do, because we don't want you guys to miss it. Also, today is the final chance to submit your coloring sheets for the competition that we will be announcing on Monday. So if you haven't done it yet, you need to download a coloring sheet, color it in, and send it in uh, today so that you don't miss the opportunity to be in the competition. Also, uh, we want you guys to go up to the cchtrust.org.uk website and to submit a prayer request. That's also where you get coloring sheets. You can submit your coloring sheet, but submit a, a prayer request. And we have been hearing some of the things that you guys are praying for. And if you haven't done this yet, please do. We'd like to know what is on your heart and mind and what things we can pray uh, for you and along with you for. So also, while you're up there, there's a Pioneer Review. 
and we would like you guys to go up there to do the review quiz, to do the lesson, and, and see how much you have been learning. We want you to go up there and to give it your best shot. Also, maybe you are like me and your Bible is on your bookshelf here. Well, I want to ask you to dust it off and to read it. Spend some time this week reading it. And maybe you don't have your very own Bible. Well, then you can also go up onto the CCH Trust website and request to have a very own copy of a Bible sent right to you, to have a copy of God's Word for you that you can read every day of the week and to learn and to study and to grow in God's Word. And so if you haven't done that yet, please do it. Thank you guys so very much, and we are very much looking forward to seeing you guys on Sunday for the very special Sunday School edition of Pioneer Bible Club. Thank you, boys and girls, for tuning in once again to the Pioneer Bible Club. And I'm trusting that the things we've heard and learned today would stick with us. And uh, you tell me, uh, what was your favorite part about today's club? Very good. And how many of you are working at memorizing that Bible verse? Would you raise your hand? Good. Hide God's Word in your heart. And uh, I'm enjoying this series, this lesson on the life of David. We've come to the end of another week. And God willing, in just a couple of days, we'll gather together on the Lord's Day to meet once again and pick up where we left off today. But I'm so glad you've tuned in with us. Let's pray together and we'll wrap it all up with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we are thankful and we give thanks to Thee for this club and for this day. We rejoice, Lord, at the truths that we've learned and we thank Thee for the beautiful songs that we've been singing and how precious it is to be able to sing even uh, these children singing praise to Thee. And I pray, Father, that each one of us would be brought a little bit closer to Thee. And we pray that our eyes would be opened and our hearts would be softened. And we pray once again for the salvation of everyone who's watching, the children and the adults as well. We ask, Father, that You would continue to keep us safe through this challenging time but that we might grow and that our heart's desire would be to honor and worship and adore thy name. Bless these children, bless their parents, their families, bless all of our, our hospital workers and carers. And we pray, Father, that we would each be uh, kept safe until we meet once again. Bless now, we pray, the things we've heard and see. Seal them in our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, children. I'll see you in just a couple of days, God willing. Thank you.